Folks, welcome back to the CCL week number three, day two. And it's time to close things out with one last match. My name is Seymour, joining in with Cruz. We're here to bring you the last match of the day in replacement of Proper and McCornmeal. We got West Virginia University Mountaineers going up against Penn State University. This is going to be a big match, Jesse, because when you look at these two in the division, it is one strong division. Uh, it's one strong division, and we got two absolutely heavy hitters coming out of it. You got Penn State coming in at 4-0, going up against West Virginia University, also at 10-0, or sorry, also at 4-0. Very, very strong teams. And like you said, this division, it's still all to play for. There is a huge amount of great teams in this division. You got Penn State, who's number seven ranked, Concord, number 12 ranked. You got Shannon Doha sitting at 4-0. Now West Virginia sitting at 4-0. I mean, like, yeah, I don't think we could ask for a better division. I don't think we can ask for a better division indeed. And we're going to look at the head-to-head -head now between these two. You got West Virginia U on the left, Penn State on the right. Both teams undefeated. One will have to fall today. Yeah, and I mean, when you look at this overall, I mean, you got two back-to-back -back perfect hard point records. West Virginia has been able to take one more search and destroy than the likes of Penn State. Penn State lost that map, obviously, to Concord. West Virginia yet to really play anybody super tough yet coming into this one. But they do have that one control win from earlier on today. And uh, it was on the same map that we'll actually end up seeing in this series. So lots of implications coming from this series. Lots of implications, Jesse. And I'm excited to see when those implications do come into the limelight. But I think it's time to introduce these rosters. When we're looking at our home team, you're looking at West Virginia University. The Mountaineers coming in with a brand new new team a brand new or the first time debuting in the season as well for 2022 you got Cyro, bruford ethan and mr toxic and this roster has been very good so far this season swyro has been that one player who has just kind of kind of taken the game above and beyond for his team he's the clear main slayer on this team but you're really looking at him and mr toxic to really step it up in that ar and smg role when going up a team like this penn state roster Yes, you are, but I think it's time, Jesse, to introduce their opponents across the board, across the table, the away team, Penn State, a well-rounded squad. You know, we've seen them before in the CCL, and they're back again to do it all over. You got the veterans, the AR in shades, and Taze, the SMG, to lead the way. We also got two new faces, and it's Johnson and Epics. And it's Johnson. He'll be the, the player who's kind of running that main AR role now for this team. Last season, he was on, this, on the bench. He's been promoted, like you said, up into this main role. And he's running that AR, and he's doing it at a very high level this season. Not really missing a beat so far throughout the season. And then, of course, you got Epics. He's brand new to Penn State this season, but running that SMG role. Flexes to the third AR when he's needed. But honestly, this team has been so well-rounded all throughout the season. And with that top 48 placement at Champs last year, it was very, disappointment for, very disappointing for this team you know that that team is looking to right that wrong from last season. This team looks might just be the team to be able to do so. Oh, Jesse, of course. You're always looking to improve now into the season. Don't want to repeat history like you did and get fall back onto that. Let's take a look at the series, though. Best of five coming through, and it is going to be a long one. You talk about implications. Well, this one is going to have a bunch of them. But when you look at the map set, it's a whole lot of the same. You got a double dose of Berlin. They were closing out with three Tuscans. So only two maps to really choose from, but it's I mean, still no going to be a big one. Me, though. I mean, you, you get the double dose of Bertle and the triple dose of Tuscan. How can you complain about this? Probably the two best maps in this game right now. Absolutely love everything about these. And I mean, w when you're looking at Berlin and Tuscan, when you look at like the two hard points, we, were t we, we keep bringing this up on stream, but you know, I'm going to keep bringing it up. Those okay, are your systematic yeah. hard point maps. Those yeah. are the maps where you need to make sure your your rotations are on point. You're constantly setting up and trying to lock down full 60s on your money hills. And honestly, these are the two best maps for in terms of how this game works for just knowing that you're kind of better than the other team. If you can lock down and run one of these maps, very likely you should be able to lock down and run the other one as well. And both these teams being at the same level, you want to win this. This isn't a match that you want to lose. One team is finally going to have to give up their undefeated stance. And I think a big map to look at in this whole best of five is going to be that middle one, the Tuscan control, because, I mean, a Penn State, we got a lot of history from this team looking at them in the 2021 season. And last year, control was their best game mode. So coming back into it now, this is the first time we're going to be able to see Penn State play control in the CCL as they did get a bye yesterday. So... I mean, this might be a little bit troublesome if you're West Virginia and you're looking at control coming into the mix. 
this is where things get really, really scary for the rest of this for the rest of the Southeast A division. Penn State was looking great before this, twelve and one coming in in map count. But now you add control into the mix, and yeah. they were so good at control last year. They only dropped one map of control the entire season. So it, they just basically made a good yeah. team even better coming into this one. And it's things you absolutely love to see for this Penn State roster. It's going to be a lot. And I, honestly, I think that's probably the scariest thing to look at in this series because, I mean, you look at uh, West Virginia University, we don't have a lot of this team. You know, this is going to be a, both of our first time really witnessing this squad play in the CCL. And we did get a little bit of an update for them. I mean, they just played a match today and they, in fact, won two maps that we're going to be playing today a berlin search and a tuscan control so i mean when you're looking at that that is going to take a little bit of uh pressure off of your shoulders but still against penn state it's going to be a tough one yeah and i mean that win came against maryland though so i think my statement from the top still kind of or is something that we were talking about at least was that this team hasn't really been tested yet yeah they played up against lebanon valley college and you know what lebanon valley college a very good team who has had a very rough start to the season so far but west virginia they handled them still it was a two it was a 3-0 both the hard points were very close though i think like when we were looking at the overall of everything today and we were like trying to come up with keys to victory when you're looking at this west virginia roster you really need to be looking at taking both the search and destroys against penn state because hard points it's going to be so so tough to beat this penn state team well let's go berlin hard point penn state initial time here for the office, they got things lost down. Swyro is going to find one. A team kill not going to help. But Ethan to follow in suit is going to get a big two-piece to open things up. Flip things out as well. Fighting from the front. The Mountaineers are going to get in for some time with their own. Still 30 seconds. You do see Taze hop in for the contestion. Epics to follow. Bruford watching with the automaton. He's going to get some shots down, but not going to finish it. Still tased inside for this contestion. Bruford's going to fall. Shades to follow up. And it's a break back in for Penn State. A great break from Penn State, too. They'll get the remaining bit of the scrap time here. Should put them to right around 30 seconds as we look to head over towards our new hill. But I love what the Mutineers are doing already. Or, sorry, the Mountaineers are doing already. They've decided, hey, you know what? <laughs> We, we, we don't care about this scrap time. Let's just get a full setup here for the mailroom. Try to win this rotation over. But Epics may have been able to sneak through the rain series. The only player for Penn State really in and around the hill. And he's got a big job to do here. Well, here's Epics. Bruford is going to fall. Taze winning around the hill. Mountaineers did break in now. Taze to the window. Finds Ethan. Two in a row. Now it's a four spree. Forte's trying to find that glide bomb as well into the mix through the door. Mr. Toxic, what a big kill to shut down Taze before you get those streaks underneath them. Allows Mutineers now to, or Mountaineers, to start collecting oh, time. No. Yeah, it's going to be a troublesome one. It's going to be a troublesome one. You started something. Yeah, but I, I, this is not Florida. This is West Virginia University. We got we got to get that drilled into our heads. But nonetheless, you know what? It's been a good start for them here. They'll basically chalk time there 50-50 it with Penn State throughout that map and sorry, throughout that hill. And now we look to have it over towards our third hill. And once again, another rotation where you see West Virginia University be the first team over here. They're going to be trying to lock down these spawns in the back with Shades. He's really trying to be kind of the difference maker here for the likes of Penn State. He's got the automaton in the back. Got to go for the reload, and he's going to end up falling. So that should now be spawns secured for this crane side for West Virginia. Setting up the break. Two players and burning. Oh, what a shot from Bruford. It's going to be more down for the for Penn State, struggling to get something going in this pinch. You're looking at player number six taking the wraparound, but majority of Penn State flooding on in through the courtyard. Johnson in from the underneath. Swyro, what a kill to shut that out. This is a good time for Mountaineers. They found their way back into this now. A 20-point lead at the end and still 23 seconds to gain, so plenty of time for them to pick up. He's still getting Penn State trying to take a swing at this hill. Shades is going to drop to Ethan, and this is where you need to think about the rotation absolutely is so and one player has snuck through mr toxic he's in the back line he's going to be that route runner right now for west virginia but he does get dropped so this should be spawns now to penn state for this new hill and because of that big hold that we just saw coming from west virginia university then now it's time for penn state to try to answer back with a big hold of their own big kill from jim proof big kill from bruford can he find a second yeah taste not expecting the close hold Still alive in the back line is allowing a break from the front. Ethan taking down Epics. Nobody inside this hill. Shades last one alive around us. For the sides, Penn State gets spotted. Bruford three in a row now to break this. He's got it on a five spree. 
Along with Ethan on eight. So there's plenty of streaks for the mutant Mountaineers to pick up six. Now it's going to be strafing run in the hands of two. Mountaineers starting to pick up streaks and they're starting to take their lead to the next level. Ethan's going to find Johnson in the back now. All eyes for the break from the front. Ethan getting surrounded is going to be dropped by Epix. It's three kills to Penn State. Make it four. And they're going to get into this. Need to find Swyro. They're not going to take him down. So nobody in the hill just yet. 13 seconds. All eyes are going to be in this hill five. Oh, baby, the Mountaineers. They've come out in this series and have basically said, hey, you know what? You guys don't want to rank us inside your top 25. We're going to take this top seven team from the CCL rankings and we're going to throw them to the Wolves right now. They need to run up against us before we can consider them a top team. And that's exactly what we're seeing right now from this West Virginia University roster. Very, very good start to the game. But it looks like Penn State, they are in control of this hill for the time being. They do get a three-man wipe as well. And so if split spawns don't end up coming in here and they don't, so you'll have three players spawning up on that right-hand side if Penn State reads this correctly, this could end up being a really big hold here. Tay's in a good spot. You gotta be aware of the break, though. Bruford, fine shades. Nullifying the time now. Big double down from Taze to Johnson. Gets back into the sill. 26 seconds a game. Could bring them back to notably even into the second set of rotations. Taze on four in a row. Can't find that glide bomb. Big kill from Swyro to shut that down. A big one-on-one -on -one here. Johnson, can you stay alive? No, but Shades is picking him up. Swaps the automaton and can't get the kill into Broford. So the break back from Mountaineers. They're going to shut down Penn State for the rest of that time. And now you're looking at the second set of rotation. And who's here first? Mountaineers surrounding Epics. But Taze found a huge two piece to slow down this rotation for the Mountaineers. Otherwise, they would have even more players here in and around this hill. And Shades runs in. He pops a huge two piece as well. That is so big for Penn State because that completely solidifies spawns for them. Down in this bottom right hand train yard side of the map, they can continue to watch over towards the courtyard. And this is a, just a perfect setup for them now. This is where you can really start to see Penn State score up some time. You see why both of these teams are 4 0 inside the division. Setting up for a break for the Mountaineers. Broford in for time. Swyro's going to lock down two. He flips things now to the break. Mountaineers collecting it. Yeah, what a break indeed. Seemed almost clean. Nobody from Penn State really ready for that. And now they're forced to take another swing at this so that Mountaineers don't collect the remaining 20. Johnson's going to lock down two. Excellent shots. Broford still alive. Looking to contest, but not going to be able to stay alive for too long. Epic's going to pick him up, and it's the last 10 seconds that Penn State are going to look to grab. What's big is because they end up spawning off there, you look up at the top right hand side of the map, the Mountaineers, because they were able to push inside that hill and they basically forced Penn State to come back, everybody's spawning up on that top right hand side of the map now onto player number four up at the top. So it works out really well. They can try to push into the hill, but I mean, a perfect rotation though from Taze as he pushes across the map, he's able to find three more in a row. He's off four HP right now and still challenging things. The guy's an absolute menace with the sub. Taze. Looking to lock him down on the cross. Not allowing anybody to step foot near this. He's going to have to double back. Pick up these kills for the teammates. Find Swyro on the inside. Lots of kills to Penn State. They locked down three in a row. Who's going to be here? Closest is player number two. Bruford around the back door. I don't think anybody's got their eyes on him. Might be able to find a chance to break this. But while this is happening, Bruford might be able to find one. Toxic doubles down. And he really the thorn in the side of this. It's going to just break in like that. A big set of time for Penn State. They flipped the lead 150, but Mountaineers are going to get the scrap time now, and they actually have the rotations on lock. Uh, they do. Epics, oh, I thought he was going to be able to sneak through. Not the case here, though, but you still have three players for Penn State in and around the new hill here, really trying to find their way to break into this. Taze, it sounded like he was investing the glide bomb as well. Actually, it's going to be Bruford who invests the glide bomb. He's able to find one as well through the middle of the map, but the break is still coming in. Penn State, they get the top spawns. Yes, they do. You gotta be careful. All eyes in the back line. Bruford realizes it. MP5 in hand. Five spree as well. Cuts down by Johnson. Up top third. But still collecting this time. Mountaineers, they flip the lead once more. Now up by 10. Penn State setting up for a break from the front. Well, number eight, Epics from the side courtyard. Epic's gonna find one. Here comes Shades. Shut down by Ethan. Bruford three in a row for Mountaineers. And they hold on tight. Big, big holds here. This should honestly lead to around a 40-second lead by the end of this because you know Penn State's not going to take another crack at this hill. They're going to leave one player over here right now, and Taze just trying to cut down the reinforcements for the Mountaineers as they rotate over towards the train yard hill. But look, once again, Mr. Toxic has snuck his way through. They were ready for it last time, but it does not look like it's Johnson is ready for the fight this time. Oh, he, he has no idea what's about to happen. No way he, he doesn't see him. see him. No way he doesn't see Epics either. Oh no. Toxic. Oh, no, it's falling at the seams. Oh, you gotta put your glasses on, buddy. 
You can't just let that happen. Penn State holding on. A streak gets burned as well. They're collecting some good time right now and boxing out Mountaineers. Epic's inside the hill. Finds Ethan Johnson holding on for the Overwatch. Three go down once more in 34 seconds. They could tie this back up. I've not seen too many super close games yet for Penn State outside of that Concord series. When you look at the Mountaineers, they have had a ton of experience once at hard points get down to the wire. They've won so many of those close games. That could really be an edge for this team as we head towards the back half of this map. Doesn't look like Mountaineers want to take another swing at this. Penn State hop off the hill. They know they got to push into this P5. Tay's in a good position now. Let me see if he can pull these spawns away for his team while setting up a pinch into this hill. Taste. Finds Bruford now. Setting up for the collapse. Out to the gates. They go. Penn State. Can they get into this hill? No. Still not finding these kills. Shades on the inside. And Johnson for the break. But Swyro locking down them. Puts them into the grave. Four in a row for Swyro. Looking for that glide bomb now on the inside of this hill. A 10-point lead. Now 20 points as Mountaineers looking to eclipse the 200-point marker. Swyro five in a row. Glide bomb on lock. Playing for the strafing run now. Johnson gets spotted. And Johnson's going to put him down. So no strafing run for Swyro. But a big lead again for the Mountaineers. We said Swyro needed to step up. He needed to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Taze in the slaying column. He's absolutely done so throughout that game, this game so far. That's why you're seeing this 30-second lead go to the Mountaineers, and it's continuing to build this hill. Yes, it's a little bit contested here, but the setup is so good right now for West Virginia towards the new hill. That's where our eyes need to go with 10 seconds left on this hill. You can see they've already got three players set up in and around the offices. If you're Penn State here, you need a break, and you need it quick. We're looking for it. Taze leading the way. Toxic has the crossfire. In they go. Broford ready for it. Shuts him down. Johnson around the back. Epix finds a second. 54 seconds in this hill. It looks like they're ready for this break to come through the back end. On four in a row. Epix looking for that glide bomb. Is able to find it with the help of Shades. They break back into this hill. 223 to 194 though. Mountaineers have done a great job at breaking this hill one before. And look, they are setting up to do it again. Yeah, they'd like to try to hit it through the middle of the map, but it looks like Penn State's fully ready for it this time. They saw the hit come. This is exactly the same hit that they tried to do in the last set of rotations that worked so well for the Mountaineers. This time, it's perfectly read by Penn State. They said, you get us once, you fool us once, shame on you. You're not going to fool us twice here. And that's a perfect play from Penn State. And they've got the rotations down on lock going towards this new hill. Ooh, Taze almost hits Toxic. 220-220. Penn State have brought this one back. Now this is going to be a big hill number two. You're looking at Mountaineers to be there first. Johnson has some big kills to go through. Shades is going to find Broford now. Johnson collapsing from up top. But the kills are all going Penn State. Taste over the ropes. Johnson's going to find the kill. Swyro to fall. Penn State now they only need 20 seconds. If you're Mountaineers here, you basically have one more shot at trying to break this hold before Penn State's able to close this game. But you need to set up. You need to hit it as a four-man unit. Here they come. Into the front. Taste. Land on the deck, hoping the teammates can find the kills. Inside finds Ethan. Still time going, only eight seconds remaining. Anybody there to touch? Johnson watching the crossfire, not allowing them to step foot. And everything's okay for Taze. Doesn't have to find any kills. Penn State take Berlin. Wow. Wow, what a, what a treat of a first map here. And Penn State stay undefeated in hardpoint. Now improved to 10-0 and 0 in the mode. That is ridiculous numbers for so early in the season. Mountaineers dropped their first hardpoint, and I really thought that towards the end of that hardpoint, because of the Mountaineers, how much, how much, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They have so much experience with going towards deep, late hand portions of hard points that they've been able to pull out. We saw them do it against Lebanon Valley College. We've seen them do it against Maryland just earlier today. They just weren't able to pull it out against Penn State, and they had the setup on lock. If they were able to win it, it would have been on that P1 hill. Just unfortunately, Penn State, they get the perfect break, and then that rotation of P2, it was just so good and clean from Penn State. I mean, you talk about the break at the end there. That was 80 seconds uncontested that Penn State pretty much picked up at the end there to put that away. Let's take a look at the stat screen and see exactly how they did it because Penn State turned up at the end there. You had players going toe-to-toe -to -toe with them like Swyro, but you called out Taze himself. You needed him to step up and 30 and 23 step up he did. Yeah, I mean, Taze is by far the, 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 the biggest slayer on this Penn State roster, and he's once again brought it here for this map number one. It was looking rough, though, through the first little bit of that game, but they were able to bring it back. It, it was, you know what, it, it was close, but, I mean, that, that comeback was just absolute insanity towards the end of it. I mean, it was when you were the Mountaineers there, I really thought they were going to lock that down on P1. They looked so good on P1 all the way throughout the game. 
but Penn State, they were able to get the break, and then they read the play perfectly. When, the way that West Virginia broke their hill through the second set of rotations, it looked like they were setting up to the exact same break, and Penn State read it perfectly that time through. Well, this kind of sets up for our keys to victory as well, Jesse, because when we highlighted things for Penn State, we were looking at their hard point record. 9-0, and now 10-0. and with control coming back into it, you have to think this is a dangerous respawn team to go up against. But now heading into Berlin, search and destroy. You talked about Maryland, that they already went against them on Berlin search. So going back to this roster, I mean, might be definitely a step up in competition. But this is where you're going to have to look at West Virginia University Mountaineers to pull things back. It absolutely is. I mean, in our in our notes and in our keys to victory that we were looking over today in the green room, we we were saying that. If you want to be able to come out and you want to be able to win this series against Penn State, it comes down to the search and destroys. Penn State, the only spot we've seen them bleed in all year long has been in a search and destroy. No, it was against Concord, another very talented team within this division. But I don't doubt in my mind that the Mountaineers, with the pace of play and the gun skill that we've seen in that first map, that they can come out and they can take the search and destroy off of Penn State. And if they can take both S and Ds and just take either that control or that hard point, note, I think it will be a lot harder to take the, the control than it will be to take that hard point after how we just saw that map one. They can do it. They absolutely can take the series. They can. But I think the biggest thing from this, and when I was talking to the Mountaineers coach before this game came up today, he said that their biggest issue was they can't make any mistakes. And in all honesty, I really don't think they made many mistakes in that map number one. And that's why that game was so close. It was just Penn State at the end. They just clutched up big time. Except for when Mr. Toxic was peeking around P4 and didn't oh, see both of those players. That, that, was, that was a mistake that may have costed them a lot of time. But yeah, you're that's right. A great, that's a great point, Colin. I completely forgot about that. If he <laughs> finds that kill in the back, he very likely flips spawns and they could honestly have been able to get even a bigger lead there, maybe even won it on P5. You never know. It's, it's all hindsight at this point, but it, it, it would have been, been great. But you're right. They've been playing pretty sound against Penn State, and honestly, it's a surprise of a treat into the series, and I don't think they're going to step down into the search and destroy. I'm looking at, are we going to see snipers? You know, the B site definitely is a lot more preferred from these teams. You just need a smoke and a plant, and that post plant is going to be deadly. No snipers that I can see as of right now, but the bomb very quickly getting planted in this B site. You've got Taze watching over as well. Nobody's gotten a first blood yet either. Taze somehow gets back across inside what? of the bottom of mail. I don't know how nothing gets pinched on here. Oh, Epics in the middle of a crossfire. Toxic going to find it. Good shots on the shades. It is going to put him in check. Number advantage to the Mountaineers as they're starting to collapse. Eyes on these players to find the kills. Shades answers back on Ethan. Cooks the nade, but Toxic just clips his shoulder. Eclipse is wing now. Taze has forced to make a play towards the bomb. He's going to find one crossing through no man's land. Swyro for the trade. Johnson last alive. Nobody on the bomb, but the shots aren't there. Broford with the MP40 at range. He's going to give Mountaineers round one. Yeah, up on the top of Warehouse. He just wasn't able to get into the bomb watching spot in the back of Warehouse in that little window. Unfortunate for him. That would have been the perfect spot for him to be able to watch that bomb and try to close that round out. But it would have been a hard spot to be in. Either way, you basically would have had to be in that window and drop the player that was in front of the player on the bomb. And it's just a whole ordeal once you lose numbers on the defense or sorry, on the offense in that situation, once you're in post plan set up, you need to make sure you keep your numbers strong. And unfortunately, everything just kind of fell apart at the seams once Epix ran into the B site by himself. And honestly, I don't think Epix even needed to be in that position. I think that was a little bit of a misplay there from him, from the side of the Penn State roster. I don't think you need to push up that far once you get that bomb down. Just play back, play your numbers, and you probably could have closed that round out for yourself. But a very split round here coming in from the Mutineers. Sorry, from the Mountaineers. I can't believe I keep doing that. And I can it's hard. I mean, they they need to. <laughs> it looks like they want to try to find a first blood here before they decide to move this bomb to either side. The Swyro looks like he's expecting presence inside burning, but nobody's been spotted on either end. Heavy pressure towards B for the Mountaineers. Looks like they want to cross it, but keep their eyes on Bruford lurking towards A. What kind of a play are we going to see from them? Possibly, if you find this kill onto Taze, might open up a flank and. Taze, I know he's looking like he wants to. Off screen, Swyro finds first blood on the shades. And nobody's moved either. That is going to force Toxic to make a play, and Johnson's going to take him down. Look at Taze, though. He's all by himself over here. He's got a big job to do if this bomb starts making its rotation over. He will find one on a Swyro, so it's a great job from him. He actually finds two onto Bruford. It's going to leave Swyro all by himself. Hey, just give Taze all three. Just give him all three. Just, just do it. Just give it to him. I mean, Bruford was the make or break for that round, just sitting tight. 
all the way towards office, allowing Taze to do what Taze just did. You can't let that happen. If you're going to check the player towards office, you need to keep him in check. And Taze just ran free and found three kills. You need to check. Not only do you need to check it, but you also need to check all of the sites, all in and around. Make sure that you have open availability to get in and check all your corners. Nobody checked anything there for, for West Virginia. So Taze just ran rampant on the map by himself. Now two kills off possibly finding a glide bomb for himself as well. And it looks like a very similar push to what we saw in the first round here from Penn State. You're going to get Epics running in, planting this bomb down. You got Taze right near him, watching over him inside of this mail room. Bomb should go down. It does successfully. Now how do they play this post-plant setup? Do you get... I, I think if you're if you're Penn State here, I think you need to move Epics out of that B site. It didn't work for you last round, but it might work for you a little bit better this round because you've got It's Johnson making the wide flank all the way around the map. Yeah, keep Johnson on your mind, but here's the collapse from Mountaineers over the wall. Bruford's going to drop. They know where Taze is. Are they going to get the trade through the door? Taze snaps on him five in a row, and just like that, Mountaineers fall. Taze picks up the glide bomb, and Penn State pushed it two. All right, well, clearly the strategy right now for the Mountaineers is if you want to be able to win Search and Destroy, you need to take Tazed off the map. That is, I think that's going to be step number one because you are just letting him do whatever he wants in these close quarter gunfights in these last two rounds. Both rounds individually won by him for the most part there. He got three in the round before. You let him get two inside mail for free that round. Not only get the first, but get the second well knowing where his position is. It's just things you can't let happen. You can't let individuals make huge impacts on the map. Otherwise, Penn State, that's where they're really going to hurt you because this roster is filled with huge individual players. Three rounds in, Taze has a streak. B-side definitely going to be on the menu for Penn State later on. Ethan's taking the bomb to B. Oh, that stun is going to stop him in his tracks. Still wants to take a hit. Epic's on the inside. Door gets open. The beat down. Oh, oh Ethan. He can't just do that to him. Here's the streak from Taze. Is it going to have the answer back? It does. Now that's bomb down. And they should know that that's bombed down too because uh, you got to imagine that while the player was down he saw that that ethan started planting that bomb as well so Tay's now on six if he gets one more he should get that strafing run for himself as well and i mean they're just kind of playing this very slow now if you're if you're penn state because why get aggressive you don't need to and shades is going to be in such a good spot if they do try to push and try to get this bomb down because he's in the spot where you would normally be sitting and this is so great Peekaboo, it's time to go shopping. Shades finds Swyro from the back. Now, finessing his life. Easy kill into Mr. Toxic, reading that play to a T. Two quick kills is going to put the time now against Tazed, or against Bruford in a 1v3. Ten seconds left. Bruford gets spotted. Taze shuts him down. Give him the strafing run. Oh, man. And you got to imagine that the strafing run could be so so important on the B side as well on either offense or defense if you want to clear that side out just drop the strafe and run on the opposite side of it it will swing right over and kill anybody who's in that map unless you find some sort of like a little spot that you can hide in you are going to be pretty much screwed towards that strafe run just kind of make sure you don't take out any of your teammates with said strafe run that would be probably the worst case scenario that you could possibly have with that but nonetheless Penn State 3-1 up here in the search and destroy off the rip and it looks like the, we're going to see a different hit finally come in from these guys when B the first two rounds a it looks to be the site where the bomb's heading towards off the rip so far, but they do send numbers still over towards this A site. So might be a little bit of a let's bait some numbers over here, see what the situation is, and maybe rotate it back over towards B. Oh, taste takes a beat, drops on down. He doesn't know it's around the corner. It's Bruford. Make a scent. Oh, Bruford had so many opportunities to take that kill. So many opportunities. But I mean, I know we could see him. They can't, and it just yeah. hurts. It's exactly the call, though. They do indeed just throw some stuns, throw some nades, get a read for what's going on over at the A site, and they try to move this now in to get it down over at the wait, B site. I don't wait. Think, I, wait, wait, wait. Don't play. Oh, I thought he was, I was so hoping for a ninja defuse. A ninja plant. Something like that. I don't think I've ever seen that. But So Arrow says no. Now bomb in the hands. Shades answers back to the cross. Check nade. Nobody home. In the window, though. Bruford's got to be careful. You see the rotation to the back. Taze actually gets cut. Bruford's going to take him down. Johnson quick for the trade. 2v2. They know Swyro's on the inside. Chase, though, gets spotted. Is going to find Mr. Tox. Before that, now Swyro stuck in the middle of two players and is able to find one. That's about it. Penn State clutch up again in a 3v4. And they're going to take themselves to four rounds in a row now.
And it's the exact same flank that Johnson made in the last round as well on their offense, where he pushes all the way through the other side of the map, through the A site, gets all in behind inside the fire building, and then just pushes out towards the docks, gets in behind all the players on West Virginia University, and just shuts them down. A great job from It's Johnson, just to be able to slow down that whole push, now finding himself on three in a row as well. So if he finds two more kills here, he's going to put themselves, he's going to get another glide bomb for this team and really put themselves in a great spot to be able to close this game out because that glide bomb has become so important inside of competitive Call of Duty once again. Well, the round just started already. Two kills to Penn State. Mountaineers facing Matt Point right now. Shay's going to rip Bruford off the heady. 3v1, last alive is going to be Mr. Toxic. Where is this player laying? All the way upper courtyard. Bombs down inside the office. Penn State rotating accordingly. They're about to meet each other inside the train station. I don't think Mr. Toxic is going to be ready for this flank whatsoever. Opens the door, oh. but he can't even cross it. Penn State moving up to map point here on Berlin. And they are looking sound as ever in the search and destroy. And that bomb was down in a terrible spot too. Because not only does he need to pick up that bomb, but inside of that office building you never know who could be in and lurking around it so not only do you need to push your way in but you need to also be checking every single angle you can see that's why he opened up the door so slowly and it just allowed penn state to make that full flank and the thing that penn state did so well in that round too is once they got the numbers they just played together played that pack of dog mentality ran straight through your roster now looking to put the map away here it's been B hits after B hits after B hits for Penn State. You know, they throw a couple stuns and nades in the last round over towards A, but still bring the bomb over towards B. This time they go towards B again, but it's going to be an aggressive hit up the middle of the map from Bruford to at least be able to slow that push down and find that first blood. That's a big kill too because it's bombed down, Jesse. So Taze is going to be forced to recover this. He's going to have to walk through open eyes. And actually he does it pretty easily. So bomb's going to be picked up once more. From Penn State, look at player number two, Johnson, again on the flank. How many oh, times man. is he going to get away with this? In behind the teams, and it's times. just open season. Ethan's going to fall. Detroit's going to be there from Swyro, so keeping it even 2v2. Bomb yet to go down, but this is going to be a hard one for the Mountaineers to break back in. Shades going to be ripped. What a shot from Mr. Toxic. Days last alive. Oh, no way. He's going to just drop that. What is that? What is that play? Called the strafing run in as well after he put the bomb down. Creative. That maybe he could pick him up. Hey, I mean, you know what? You got to give him props for trying. It's not the easiest thing to get done there. Finding two kills with one little shooty pilot coming over the top, not able to find anything. And West Virginia, they'll be able to get their second round on the board. They're not out of this yet. They got to come back. And to come back in this, really, you just got to take it one round at a time. Easier said than done. But. You know what? This team, they've faced a lot of adversity already this season. They've already come back from, from down big inside of some of these games. They've played some really tight S&Ds as well. No doubt in my mind, this team can come back. They're still undefeated in every single mode now outside of Hardpoint. We just watched them drop their first one to Penn State. So very clearly a good team just needs to find their flow here in this search and destroy against Penn State. And I really, really hope we don't see them move this bomb over to B because Penn State has thrown a three-man stack over towards this site right now, putting a lot of defense on, over there. Yeah, Taze usually plays on the opposite side of the store, so I'm not sure Mountaineers are going to be ready for this. Well, who's broken that window? Taze is going to be a little bit unhappy. They check it. Did they not Taze. hear them break the door? Uh, I, I don't. I thought they would. Well, they get a free plant down. And now a two versus four for the retake here for Penn State. And yeah, this is just not looking good for them at the moment. Right, Taze was the make or break for that. Shades now. Yeah, he really was. Scratching <laughs> his head on what to do. He's able to pull this into a 1v3, but now they know exactly where he is. I'd like to see the Mountaineers not throw their lives out onto Shades here. Just wait for him to push in. You know your win condition, and right now it is time on the heady. Mountaineers are going to push themselves now to three. Nice to see them starting to make their way back in, but you're not wrong. That was really all on Tazed in that round. He was the lone player over in the office. Needed to make sure he shut it down, and... I really don't know what he was watching there, to be completely honest. He was kind of in la-la land. They break right through the through the door. He does not notice, does not hear the sound cue, I guess, of the door being broken either. And just completely was not ready for that fight off the rip. And now Penn State still on the offense here, trying to get this done. They've had two chances in a row. They've got a three more to still do it. So chances come in. Very, uh, uh, very large amounts here for Penn State to be able to close this game out. But again, you're going to get a player being a little bit aggressive here inside the site for the Mountaineers and Syro. And he'll be the lone player here needing and trying to shut this down. Here's that. Here's Epic! Oh, Swyro, not ready for it. 
Pistol out, and he's gonna shut it down. Bomb's going down here. This might be where Penn State can close out this round. Ethan looking to make a heroic play, but I feel like they know he's here. It looks like they do, and Tay's gonna take him down. 1v4, Bruford last alive to keep the Mountaineers alive inside this search. Trying to rotate all the way up through the middle of the map, but it's just all angles locked down. Johnson's going to spot him out. Broford trying to take the play. He's actually going to get the shots on him. Johnson just staying alive right now, allowing the team to rotate accordingly to where this is. He's going to find Johnson in the end. 2v1. 17 no seconds. Time. Shades. Shots there, but you're right. There's just no time to make this happen. Broford has to do it all right now, and he's got to do it all fast. Shades. Around the outside, Broford takes the fight, 1v1, but there goes the clock, and Epix is going to close this out. Penn State, they take map two. Valiant effort, but once you get down to the very end, and it's a one versus two with 20 seconds left, that's when things get so tough, especially when you need to get that diffuse. Take seven and a half to be able to get that diffuse. So realistically, he had, what, 10 seconds to find two kills, then make the rotation over to get that bomb and get on it in time to get the diffuse. It's just such a hard spot to be in, especially because as soon as you get that first kill, the second player knows exactly where your information is. And then at that point, you're able to just run free, get away, get to where you need to go to close that game out. And I mean, what a great game from Pennsylvania off the start of that game. Penn State had a huge start to that map, and it just, they just never looked back once they got that big 4-1 lead. I couldn't agree more. It was crazy, crazy map from Penn State. Mountaineers, they did a good job of climbing out into it again, but they just couldn't close out. They couldn't find the rounds that they needed to, and they just gave Penn State too much cushions. Let's take a look at the stats. Let's see exactly what we were looking at from Penn State to take that victory in map number two. And once again... It's tased, but he didn't do it alone. Shades 10 and 6 it's as well. Duo. That's crazy numbers. It's the duo, Shades and Taste from last season, once again, popping off here. I mean, their S and DKDs were both over a two last season. And look at this. Once again here, almost a, or actually over a two KD for both of them here in this game. I mean, they put up absurd numbers every single time these two play. They're the veterans on this team, they're leading this team, and they're doing it again this season, looking fantastic. But you gotta give your love to Bruford on the other side. Went 10 and eight, had a very good game. Swyro multiple times as well, was inside of that site, trying to be the player to shut down that push from Epics, who going four and five is the bomb carrier, not the worst game at all for him either. Just, you know what, it's unfortunate they do end up losing that map out, but it was absolutely a map where, you know, a couple of adjustments come in. Next time you play up against this Penn State team, I think they could take it. I think they could take it. Indeed. I mean, it, it's not out of the question. It's not totally wild even after seeing, you know, what happened in that hard point. I mean, it was neck and neck between Mountaineers and Penn State. I mean, the search and destroy got a little bit out of hand early, but you run that back and... You know, a lot of those players on Mountaineers, they were showing up towards the late end of the game. And if they could run that back, I'm sure that they would like to keep that momentum going at the start. Just maybe a little bit Even shook. Even streaks up so early. That too, yeah. Streaks just, were, a, were a big case. Yeah, I think they gave up streaks. What, it was like the third round and you already had tased on streaks. Because he yeah. was able to get three in a row on you in your first offense. And then in his, the next offense, for them, he was just sitting inside a mail room and picked up two kills for free. You don't give up those streaks. He doesn't win the next round for free as well by dropping a glide bomb on your team and dropping you out of the thing out, out of the B site before you can even get the bomb down. So, I mean, it's a lot of little things. And honestly, you got to think that if West Virginia, the next time they play, if they, you know, take a couple of steps back, really learn from that and i mean even if we go and we see a tuscan snd later they might be able to take some adjustments from this from what they've learned from how penn state plays their snd and be able to use it to their advantages the next time and i don't even want to i don't even want to talk about the shooty pilot man that was that was the most creative thing ever. i mean they bold. tried that was bold you know i don't think i've ever seen anything like that in call of duty competitive but it, it, it you know it didn't work but it was interesting folks we got tuscan control coming up next before that a break this has to be a reverse sweep from the mountaineers and it's got to start inside the control we'll see you in a bit Folks, welcome back to the quick break. We're here with WVU Mountaineers going up against Penn State University. Now sitting 2-0 into the series. It's going to have to be a reverse sweep if the Mountaineers want to take this over Penn State. And let's take a look back at the match that we've had prior to this. Because the history, I mean, the outcome that we have right now, it doesn't really tell the story, Jesse. I mean, that Berlin hard point was neck and neck. That Berlin hard point was a pretty big lead for West Virginia University at one point for themselves. But... Unfortunately for them, they got broken on P1 pretty early in the last set of rotations. Penn State was able to break on in there and then have a flawless rotation from P1 over to P2, able to close the game out for themselves. And you know what? It was 
not easy for Penn State by any means in that respawn, but they got the job done. Then we go over to the Berlin S and D, and you know what? Honestly, they looked even better in that Berlin search. They did. Sure. It was a five-one lead at one point for the likes of Penn State. You saw West Virginia University; they started to claw their way back, but they gave up way too many rounds, gave up way too many streaks early on in that game to the likes of Penn State. That Penn State just had all the means necessary to close that game out. They had so many opportunities, so many chances that at one point you just had to think, like, hey, you know what, Penn State, we're going to close this one out for themselves. Now we look towards this Tuscan control and it does not get any easier for the West Virginia University Mountaineers they did win this map 3-2 earlier on today the issue is is you're going up against Penn State now on what was their best mode from last season they only dropped one control in the entire season I think maybe the one thing you get here if you're Penn State or sorry if you're West Virginia University is the fact that Penn State has not had to play a Tuscan control yet because Tuscan control has not been in the game until this week so maybe you can catch them off guard a little bit maybe they're not as practiced yet at control it's gonna have to be the case as we stated it's gonna be a reverse sweep if the Mountaineers Wanted to upset Penn State, the number 17 right now in the CCL. These folks, Mountaineer fans, show some spirit. Rally behind the team. They need it right now. Because they got to start here. Tuscan Control. Hopping on board with Mr. Toxic right away. Heading over to the A site indeed. AR in hand. And Penn State's actually going to take a pretty wild swing at this. Running it right through mid. Looking to see if they can get in behind the Mountaineers before they lock down too much time. Oh, Taste found a route. He's able to get one. Oh, you can't let him do that. He doesn't get the second, but teammates are right there to be able to clean it. And actually, a lot of trades go down to the point where the Mountaineers are going to be the team still here inside of this hill. And they get one tick of progress confirmed. But, I mean, if you don't know yet and you haven't seen any control from this season, this A zone is the easier zone by far. Mountaineers it are going to spawn them close to this zone. They can get inside. They can get it. The hard part on this map mode combination right now is not getting this A zone. But taking the A zone and getting yourself into the B zone because of how close the defense spawns to it. Not only do you need to get one tick or sorry, one wave of kills, you're probably going to need to get two and pin your players up in the back. And it's just, it's so hard to hold that B zone. So you want as many lives and as much time as possible to be able to do so. But I mean, a great start for the Mountaineers. They got a two life lead and they've got two and a half minutes realistically to work their way over and into B here. And Taze again, he's got the route in behind three down. They deal with the push relatively easily, and now Taze is ready to fly at them. Off spawn, they gotta be worried about Taze here. He is so comfortable in the map, and he is running as many routes as he can find in the bottom now of Command Center. Might be able to shut this down before it starts. They hear it. Taze good for one, but Spyro with the trade. To, again, it's Johnson to find a second, make it a third, so Mountaineers kind of snuffed out before they can make an attack happen. Another rest of Penn State. You can see they've got all the information they need right now. So everybody's just setting up. They're setting up this crossfire to shut down this push. They will find two. A beautiful nade from Tazed. But trades do come in. And now, if you're West Virginia University, you can start to make your way up here. But the problem is, is Penn State is just spawning so close. The reinforcements get back to this hill so quickly on this site. Shades up top. One last player. Four Mountaineers. Johnson's going to find him. 16 lives to the 12. Taste again in a aggressive position. And again, he's going to find not one, but two onto Ethan. Put an absolute work into this Mountaineer squad. Epics locks down the opposite end. And Mountaineers now pinned in their spawn. They're going to have to work out a couple gunfights. This is just... This is just when you can get absolutely torched to put right into a spawn trap here. Only seven lives left as well for West Virginia University. So I like what they're doing. They're grouping up right now because they know realistically they've got one shot at probably trying to break this at this point of the game. They will be able to stop the clock if they get onto the B site. So time not fully an issue here with 29 seconds left, but having seven to 14 and double lives on Penn State. Penn State realistically right now, all they need to do is play, is just play uh, team deathmatch. They find a flurry of kills. Time against them though. We got a flood in the back. Toxic gets found. Taze to shut him down. Five lives to ten. Johnson's going to find Swyro on the hill. It's Bruford. Stops the clock at 14 seconds. Last chance for Mountaineers to make something happen. He is going to have backup, but he decides to fly to take this fight on the front line. Epic's going to drop back into the hill. Stops at a 10. The crossfire is set up. Shades locks down two. Taze has the high ground and just nobody can get close to the hill. Swyro's last alive. Penn State, they're going to take round one. And it's a defensive round win. It's kind of what you expect to come here on this Tuscan control map. 
and Penn State, they do exactly what they need to do. Not only did, were they getting wipes, but once they got those wipes on defense, they were all pushing forward, moving up into the rest of the map, and just really cutting off any spawns that you saw from the likes of West Virginia University. It made it very, very hard for that team to be able to come out of their spawn, to be able to get comfortable on the map, to be able to open things up. It, and it all started off with, honestly, the first push from West Virginia. As soon as they got that A site, they all tried to push them through the church side of the map, through that top side, and Penn State just shut it down immediately, got so much map control, and it was just so hard for the Mountaineers to be able to get out of it from that point on. Back onto, now onto attack for Penn State. Looking to string together two round shades, finds Mr. Toxic, but in return, it's two kills to the Mountaineers. Epic's watching in the middle of the map. Nice raid from Ethan. It's going to be an opening back to the hill, but oh, shades. <laughs> Jesus, what a shot onto Ethan. Absolutely beams him. It's four in a row for himself. Now playing for those streaks. There he goes. He gets the glide bomb in hand. Has a little bit of backup now. The reinforcements are here. Taze watching around the corner, chasing them down one by one. And Swyro trying to make last ditch effort, but he just gave Shades a strafing run. He does give Shades a strafing run, but I think the big thing here is that if you are the Mountaineers, you're not down in numbers now going in towards this new hill. The issue is, though, is that you do have that glide bomb. Like you said, you can try to use that glide bomb to try to give yourself a little bit more information as you break into this B site. You need to make sure you have players in and around the hill, though, to follow up that glide bomb. You don't want to just waste it here. No, you don't. I mean, look at player number 14 trying to do the best impersonation of Taze in the last round. Ethan still dancing here. Johnson knows he's here, so relatively Penn State, they could just take a hit at B. Neglect that last player. 4v3 on site. And make a play. Shades finds Bruford in the back. Player number four still hasn't rotated just yet. Here comes the hit onto the site. Epic's going to drop Mr. Toxic to trade this one out. Leaves him even three on three. Respawn comes in. So Mountaineers now. They have the numbers. Stays fine. Swyro expecting the peak as well. Just haven't gotten a chance to hit this site. Taze still alive in radio. They lose the pitch from Johnson. So all eyes on the front line right now. If you're the Mountaineers, Taze has the high ground control. But nobody into the site just yet. The clock is getting burned. A minute 20 onto the shades is going to fall. So Penn State all this time and it hasn't turned into anything. It hasn't, but look, player seven has gotten in the back. Epics can make a big play here if he's able to find these two players. It should open up so much map control for the rest of Penn State to be able to push up into this. He sees that player in the back. He finds one. Can he get the second one here? He can't, and Bruford goes huge for two. Big for two. Can't find a third. Johnson flying. Secondary can't swap in fast enough. Cut down, though, through the middle of the map. 14 lives to 13. 45 seconds left. Still have streaks in the hands of Shades. In case you want to make this last chance, there's a good opening. Three in a row now. Time to hit the site. Last player live for Mountaineers is going to be up top of the platform. I don't know if they spotted him. No, they didn't. Mr. Toxic is able to get one, and then here come the rest of the teammates. They shut it down again. Only 30 seconds left. If you're Penn State, you don't have the numbers and lives. So this is where you need to just make sure you get one full clean hit here as a team push through. Taste finds one in the back. He's on four in a row as well, looking to possibly get some streaks even if they don't win this round. 21 seconds left. Nobody in the hill. Finally, they're going to stop the clock. Shades watching this push now. Has the high ground control. Aware the from Swyro. Aware the flank's coming through. Swyro goes down on the inside, though. It's Mr. Toxic and Ethan to break in. Tay's still alive on five in a row. Has the glide bomb, but finally he's going to get cut down. 16 seconds left. Seven lives to five. Penn State only have one hit le left, Jesse. I mean, at this point, you might just need to individually fly at the hill. I don't think you have enough time to really stack this up and try to make one solid hit at this. It looks like they will. They'll get three players in and onto the site, and they'll win three gunfights in a row. Just like that, Epics. Ethan's going to take him out, but one player left. It's Swyro. He's going to be able to find Johnson, but Epics is there to answer the call. Penn State, they find two rounds in a row, and it may have been close there, but they also find an attacking round, so... Mountaineers, they are pinned up against the ropes. And I see what they did at the very end there. The reason they all stacked up is they wanted to take the gunfights because they realized, hey, you know what? If we get on this and stop the clock, they have to push us. We can take the numbers and finish the round off like that. It's exactly what Penn State does towards the back half of that game. Great job by them. Great way to close it out. Oh, man, no. Did it, it, it got a little rocky there in that it round. Did. But Penn State, uh, like, they're showing their ice right now, able to close that out. And the best part about this is for them is if we do end up going to a situation in this round where West Virginia is able to get onto that B site later in the round, they have a glide bomb that we want to break. Oh, never mind. They're going to enforce it right now. That's Taze's glide bomb. Oh, Shade still has streaks, though, as well. Ethan, he is going to eat that one. 
Shades are on the outside. There's the break in for the Kadeshian. Taking some heat from behind. Gets the snap. Taze to answer back. So the break comes through. Mountaineers again off spawn. And Taze wants to take more four in a row. Trying to get that glide bomb right back into his pocket. As it looks like Mountaineers are going to take a shot at B. And they do find Johnson and Shades aware that this is possible. So backing on up is going to be able to negate this attack towards B. While the rest of the team of the Mountaineers trying to take A once more. I like this play call from the Mountaineers as well. Because what it does is it makes a couple of the players that are on this A site and dominating the A site in Penn State turn around. Makes them have to think about it a few more times. And actually Penn State's going to invest both glide bombs on the a site now the second one doesn't even find anything you don't even really get them off the site for all that long as well but it looks like penn state they don't even want to go to a b site they want to get it done here but with 44 seconds left on the clock and still 20 lights it's going to be a tough task to be able to stop this west virginia team from getting this a zone here comes the contest shades in the back is going to find one swyro trying to stay alive but taze has the number Looking to neutralize the rest of this A site. 40 seconds remaining now. Mountaineers struggling to get some semblance of control towards A. And every single time they walk one by one, it's always somebody there set up from Penn State. Taze is making another wrap around oh, to the back line. I don't even think they're ready. Bruford's going to invest the streak. Here comes the information, but Taze is going to find them from behind. Locks down two, shuts down the attack, and the glide bomb amounts to nothing. Taze has been that guy for this team in the middle of the map. He's been so annoying, not allowing any of the, Mutine the Mountaineer players to get in, get onto this hill. And again, another glide bomb gets invested here from Taze. So many streaks being invested. And with only one player left in and around any of these hills, you expect that maybe... The, that maybe he tries to get aggressive onto this B site, but he doesn't. They only have a few seconds left to get onto it. Well, they might have capped A, but 12 lives to five, and they're falling fast. Johnson finds Ethan. Four lives remaining. No more respawns for the Mountaineers. It's do or die in the series. Bruford, farthest one pushed up. Look at this. Penn State cutting off the reinforcements. Taze is going to find him from behind. Three go down. Ethan last alive. He's trying to make something happen, but it's just too little, too late. Penn State with the sweep. They get out their brooms. It's going to be a 3-0 on the night. That's crazy. I didn't even realize that they capped that A site. That's why I was casted the way I was towards the end of that hill. Or, sorry, towards the end of that zone. And I, I really thought that they didn't get A because of the glide bomb. But I guess it came through at the very end there. But, yeah, wow, Penn State showing us that dominance once again here in control. Seymour, a team that only lost one control map throughout the entire season last year, starts us off the exact same way they finished last year with another control win here and a nice 3-0 victory over the Mountaineers, who honestly very much so impressed me today. And I think a few changes here and there, I think this team can really contest with some of these top 25 schools. I've said it for the past three weeks, and I'll keep saying it. I mean, it's only the start of the season. We have five months of play for the CCL, so there's plenty of time to evolve for these teams, but this is a big match for Penn State now, pushing themselves to 5-0, and handing Mountaineers their first loss, so they're going to be sitting 4-1. and Let's take a look at the stats. Let's check out that control map because Penn State, they delivered, and like you said, they keep up with the success from the 21 year, and again, who is it? It's Tazed. 32-16, and 16, 23 of them non-traded. Absolutely unreal stuff, and I mean, it's Tades and Shades, man. I mean, Always. you expect these two players. We said it coming into this series. The two returning players from last year's Penn State roster, you expect them to come in and lead the way, get the job done. Epix is running that role where you kind of need to not just be a slayer, but he's the objective player. So he's doing a lot more. He's carrying the bomb in, in search and destroy. He's getting inside of the hill, inside a hard point. It's not easy to get a, a positive KD doing that objective role. He does the dirty work on the map, but you know what? It's a well-rounded team effort from this Penn State roster. That's why they're winning maps. That's why they're 5-0 and now inside of the CCL. And you know what? They've also already played two of the top four teams. So you got to think, if they go up against Shenandoah, who is the other 4-0 team now, not sure how their games have gone today, but once they go up against Shenandoah, if they win that map, I mean, they don't really have anybody else they got to beat inside of this division. The division is theirs at that point. I, I don't want to just talk up Penn State here because Mountaineers, I mean, they came out and they impressed me just like they impressed you. And most notably... I mean, Swyro and Bruford in the control, 24 and 21 for Bruford, 21 and 18 for Swyro. And you talked about Swyro being the main slayer for this roster in the Mountaineers. And I think he's done a great job at kind of rallying this team together for what they have. They may have lost on the night, but I mean, 
they're still sitting at a really high record inside a tough division so there's nothing to really frown upon on that if you are the mountaineers you went up against a good penn state and i mean you may have lost in a very convincing fashion but you kept a, a lot of those rounds and a lot of those maps pretty close and the score line it did not tell the series jesse so if we take a look at the maps we can get a little bit of a recap on that series and just let us know i mean what what was that storyline here because mountaineers in mean, a lot of those rounds they were close yeah, I mean, the, the big storyline here is you start that hard point off and they had a big lead in that hard point at one point. It was looking like it was going to be going into their favor for sure. But unfortunately for them, Penn State, they had other plans. That that first zone of the third set of rotations, that first hill, they held it so well. Mountaineers were able to break that same hill in the second set of rotations. But in the third set, Penn State, they knew exactly what they needed to do. They shut it down, got the flawless rotation from P1 over towards the mail room for P2 and just completely stopped Mountaineers from staging any sort of a comeback to being able to win that game. Then we head towards the Berlin s and And I mean, you know what? Honestly, that map was all Penn State. It was a 5 one lead off the rip. Mountaineers, they, they mounted a little bit of a comeback towards the, set, towards the end of it, but it just was not enough. And that Tuscan control, I mean, it was close. The first, the first round came down to a few numbers here and there. Second round, Penn State literally got onto the hill with four seconds left and then was able to finish off the last couple remaining players on Mountaineers. And then that third round, it was just all Penn State. They had way too many streaks to be able to deal with if you were the Mountaineers to be able to stop them and to be able to close that game out. And it was just a very good game. And you know what? I, I like something that you said. The Mountaineers, they, yeah, they may have lost this week, but you know what they did? They gained a lot in experience. And it's still their first season inside of the CCL. They did. You have a ton of room. It's only week three. This team can grow and improve. And they still need to play Concord. They still need to play Shenandoah. Those are two top teams and those are going to be two very big tests for this team because you need to go up against those two teams and not only beat them but kind of beat them convincingly if you want to be able to get inside of that top three a lot of room for growth for the series jesse but for tonight that is going to be all she wrote for the stream folks thank you for tuning in for the ccl week two day two here it's been quite the series of events and next week we get to do it all again so don't forget over the rest of the week, make sure you follow College Cod on Twitter as well as follow the Twitch stream, not just this one, but College Cod Bravo as well. Keep up to date, put the notifications on, make sure you are ready for the next couple of matches on Monday and Tuesday. We're going to do it again next week. I can't wait to see you all there. Have a good rest of your week, everybody. We'll see you on Monday.